Good evening, and welcome to Jazz Vespers of St. Peter's Episcopal Church. Thank you very much to Jasmine for lighting our candles. They can be rather fickle. You can't probably see from here, but there are three wicks in there, and sometimes one or the other is uh, not cooperating. So thank you, Jasmine, for being persistent. We invite you all to sit back and relax and enjoy an uh, evening of jazz and of scripture and of meditation. This is actually All Souls Day in the church calendar. Yesterday was All Saints Day, so we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as we proceed on. But this evening I want to make a special mention. I usually mention all of our band members at the end, but we have a guest with us tonight, Johnny Lamb, on bass. And so... We are very excited to have you part of the uh, band tonight. And of course, Dan Del Negro on piano. And Star Kalahiki on vocals. And Reggie Padilla, our band director and tenor saxophone player. Take it away. Yardbird sweet, leave you no doubt, tell you about. Charles Yardbird Parker was his name, the fax. He wrote his name in history. The sax was his ax. His improvisation was miraculous. A mastermind of rhythm was he. He blew with notes that nobody had ever heard before till then. Doom has ever been so often true as genius. Seemed to do, he suffered his life through. He gave us a yard bird sweet. All because he never stopped blowing. With his miserable bones, he seemed to poem his only mate. His person is in the field. He never knew what being them down could be. He knew that blowing that made music on a sad and free. He blew and blew and blew until he had the changes of the sound. And that was all before he knew he was just a boy in Kansas City. So pretty. After he came to New York town, all the local jazz would listen with admiration. Some before us new sounds around the nation, and Bud deserves the credit for the stimulating renaissance of jazz. He makes me very happy to announce a goodly portion of his best works recorded. So have a treat, hurry it up and get yourself some Yardbird Sweet. He 
give us a yard bird sweet. God is our light and our salvation, our refuge and our stronghold. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O God. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. with songs, so many songs, which one is mine, one must be right for me, the song of all the songs, when there's a star by every song, and there are oh, so many stars, so many stars. filled with dreams, so many dreams, which one is mine, one must be right for me, the dream of all the dreams, and there's a dream for every star, and there are oh, so many stars, so many stars. Alone the countless days, the endless nights that I have searched so many eyes, so many hearts, so many skies. Which one to choose? Which way to go? How can I tell? How will I know? So many stars, so many stars. Along the countless days, the endless nights that I have searched, so many eyes, so many hearts, so 
Which one to choose? Which way to go? How can I tell? How will I know? What of oh, so many stars, so many stars, so many, many stars. So So All Saints Day is always November 1st. It is a major festival of the church year. It always falls on a Thursday, so it's not um, always celebrated on that day. Often it's celebrated by churches on the Sunday following. Traditionally, November 1st, All Saints Day, was when we would remember those, uh, shall we say, famous saints of the church. So the early apostles, Apostles, the church fathers and mothers, um, the reformers, Martin Luther and reformers of the Reformation, and even more contemporary ones like a Mother Teresa or a Martin Luther King Jr., people that uh, are inspirational for us in their uh, faith journey. All Souls Day, which is today, November 2nd, then was more traditionally for remembering those in our personal lives that have helped us to understand God's love and um, a, a deeper awareness of the faith. Today, in our tradition anyway, we um, pretty much celebrate those two together, again on the Sunday afterwards. So that's what we will be celebrating this Sunday. So tonight, for the last three months thereabouts, I've been sharing stories of some of the more famous saints of the church. Tonight, I'd like to give us an opportunity to think about those saints in our lives. And we talk about saints in the sense of um, not someone who's perfect. Um, our theology says we're both saint and sinner. Saint in the sense of God's unconditional love for us, that we are um, encouraged to grow in towards God and towards one another, and as well, even when we mess up. Uh, that that unconditional love is there and to draw us back in to um, that experience of, of trying to live more closely to God in that love. So tonight, in that spirit of saint, we will remember those who have gone before us and now rest in peace. Hear this reading from the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter. After this, I, John, looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, 
and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Blue sky shining at me Nothing but blue skies Do I see Blue birds singing a song Nothing but blue birds All night long Never saw the sun shining so bright Never saw things going so right Noticing the days hurrying by when you're in love, my heart will fly blue days, all of them gone. Nothing but blue skies from now on. Nothing but blue skies do I see. Blue birds singing a song. Nothing but blue birds all night long. Never saw the sun shining so bright. Never saw things going so right. Noticing the days hurrying by when you're in love. Fly blue days, all of them gone. Nothing but blue skies from now on. Nothing but blue skies from now on. Nothing but blue skies from now on. So saints, your average saints. When I thought about that in my life, the person who came to my mind first, who always comes to mind first every year uh, when All Saints rolls around, is Marge Ballard. Marge Ballard was my eighth grade confirmation teacher back in the day. I, my generation, we had confirmation for three years, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And my eighth grade teacher was Miss Ballard. Miss Ballard had, she wore her hair in a bun on top of her head, and she had a very stern looking uh, kind of face. She was no nonsense. And um, we had confirmation at night, and during the school year, which I grew up in Wisconsin, so it was pretty much, in my opinion, winter weather all those months, except for the three in the summer. 
And so we, of all things, got into a tug of will over wearing my jacket because I would come in, I was always cold, so I came in wearing my jacket and I would sit down, you know, at the table and she'd always tell me to take off my jacket. And remember, I was an eighth grader. I did not want to take off my jacket because I was cold. And we had this, this lasted the entire year. We had this thing where she'd make me have to take off my jacket and I didn't want to take off my jacket, blah, blah, blah. Well, I later, as I got older, I later realized, oh, by the way, I didn't tell you, she also walked with a cane. I later realized, came to know that she had MS. And I'm quite certain that that stern look was actually a look of pain on her face. And every week she was there with her cane to teach us about the love of God. And she was there because it was that important to her that she share the love of God with the next generation. And now I look back and I'm really, really thankful for Miss Mar Marge Ballard. And I, I don't know, she'd probably be a little stunned hearing me say that, but I am very grateful for her. And she is someone that I think of as a saint. I'd also say my grandparents. My grandparents were um, pillars of the church. Uh, they were involved in everything, and they would, I loved going to their house because my grandpa had a special devotional that he always did, and we kids were, he let us be part of leading that for the family when, when we were there. Um, and just the way that they lived their lives. I remember my grandma, they had a railroad track behind their house, and she would um, take out food for the, back then they called them hobos, that would travel along the tracks. They really, um, in many ways, influenced me, uh, and maybe one of the reasons I'm a pastor today. So those are two people that come to my mind when I think of saints, average, everyday saints who influence my life. I invite you to join me in Psalm 34. It's printed in your programs. Those of you at home can find it in the link in the comments section. I will read the verses in light print. I invite you to respond with the verses in bold. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will, I will glory, glory in, in the Lord. Lord. Let, Let the, the humble hear and rejoice. rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought, I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and, and delivered me out of all my terror. terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I, I called in my affliction, affliction and, the and the Lord heard me, and, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Thank you.
So I shared some saints in my life. Now it's your turn. Who do you remember this evening who helped shape your spiritual journey through this life? Who helped you to learn about unconditional love and acceptance in the way of God? And for whom do you give thanks? I invite you into a time of silent reflection and uh, at the conclusion of that, I will lead us in the prayers.
I invite you to join me in prayer. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. God, our Alpha and Omega, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have followed the light of your word throughout the centuries, particularly those who have indelibly touched our lives with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As others have nurtured us in learning and believing in your goodness, so lead us in being examples for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stir the resolve of human spirits throughout the world to pursue understanding and peace, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. We especially raise our plea for your intervention between leaders in Israel and Gaza, Ukraine and Russia, and for the safety of the innocent caught in the crosshairs of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give perseverance to the refugees of our world and guide us as nation states and individuals in providing necessary aid and compassion to those displaced from the lands of their birth due to conflict, poverty, or climate distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to strengthen community efforts to address the homelessness and affordable housing crises in our state and to provide services for those who need additional support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Direct our youth who are yearning to find their paths in life. Aid them in their studies and in finding meaningful work that nurtures within them respect for themselves, for one another, and for all of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Surround those struggling with addictions, pulled down by despair, or undergoing treatment for illness, with your healing presence. Provide them with the strength to embrace healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort those grieving the loss of a loved one. Provide them with hope and your peace, which surpasses all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you've called us to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love surrounding us. Provide us with that peace which the world cannot give and a song in our hearts that rings with joy and gratitude. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working through us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine.
vocals. Dandel Nigger on piano. Johnny Lamb, special guest on bass. And Reggie Padilla, tenor saxophone player and band director. And over here in the corner we have Manny Dial along with Jasmine making it possible for all of you at home. And this evening we have a special treat because I have learned that Star Kalahiki's dad had his 80th birthday just recently. Papa Kalahiki, happy birthday! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Everybody call him Papa. Dear Papa. My family has like a B section that we sing like on our own that I didn't know the whole world didn't sing as well until I was like 25, but it goes like this. May your birthday be bright, full of cheer and delight. Happy birthday, happy birthday. And may God bless you. I love that, perfect. Happy birthday, Papa Kalahiki. Thanks for being here, everyone. Have a safe and wonderful evening, and do come back. We're here every Thursday, 6 o'clock. Aloha.